So today we're going to take a look at this little chappy, this lovely little simple flower, which has got this lovely leather raised um, centre and a lovely raised leaf. Once you've learned how to do the leather, you don't necessarily have to apply leather, but the, here's one. It's the same design, except this time we've got the leather on the leaf. We've got some lovely chipped check in the middle there instead of the leather. And I've added a very stylized, simple and quite naive bumblebee to that. But you can also just change it and just have the chip in the middle of this one and not have the bumblebee on there at all. Once you've learned how to do the leather, these are all lovely little sort of projects that you can do. None of these on the table are any bigger than a four inch hoop or an eight inch hoop. Um, you can go on and you can add some gold acrylic paint to make a book cover. You can put them on different colours. You can keep them very, very simple, no padded leather whatsoever, and just do some couching and add a few spangles. And again, some more gold acrylic paint on that one and just outlined. And then once you've mastered how to put the leather on, you could progress at some point and have a go, once you've learnt some of the other techniques, of doing some really complicated designs. And this is a lovely dragon that I did and there's the padded leather on his wing there which really gives him some sparkle and gives him some movement. So let's get started and the first thing you need to do today is you need to get your design onto your fabric so that we can start to learn how to put the leather on on this design. a small piece of paper and we need to trace off these templates which are normally um, available with the kit or it will direct you to actually trace one of these off of the main pattern. So I'm just going to draw that leaf off and make sure you stay exactly on the lines otherwise you're going to make it too big and we've got a circle here. Okay once we've done that I'm just going to put top on each one so that I know that the leather should be looking at me this way up. Because sometimes the, the the curve on a leaf on that side is different from the curve on the leaf on this side. And once I cut this out, if I haven't got top on there, I can't tell which side up. And then sometimes what it does is you can see the drawn line later on because you've reversed it over. So I'm just going to cut those out. And here's two that I did earlier. So it's my little templates. We can take that away now. So we've got my little templates here. Now, normally when you cut leather, it will tell you to cut a piece of leather the exact size and two receding pieces of felt. And quite often I'm asked, well, how do you do that? So here's my lovely shiny piece of leather. And what I'm gonna do is I want a leaf and a middle to my flower on the gold. So I'm very organized about it. I tend to pick up my piece my template I hold on to it and then I slide it behind so that I know when I cut it out my leather is going to be the right way and then don't waste any of your leather it's expensive a fine tip pen and I'm just going to draw round there very accurately okay and put that to one side and I'm going to do the same with my top looking at you, go in underneath, get that nice and close, whoops, and there's my leather shape there as well. Now I'm going to cut those out, but before I cut them out, I'm going to prepare the felt padding that goes inside. So I've got some white felt here. Now traditionally this would have, buff, would have been buff coloured, but nowadays I tend to use any felt that I've got available. Now the two receding pieces of felt We've got to do a similar sort of thing. So I'm just going to put T on my felt there so I know it's the top. I'm going to slide in from underneath and I'm going to draw around this twice because there's no other way of doing this that I know. If you know a better way, then that's fine. But this is the way I organise myself. So I draw two shapes in felt and then 
I cut the first one out just on the inside of the line, about a millimetre or two in. And when I've cut that one out, I then cut the second one out, except I come further in. So what I get in the end is something that looks like this. So if I pull this forward, now what I've done here is I've stacked them up so that I can see that it's going to work because there is nothing more frustrating than actually applying all of your padding to that area, putting your gold piece of leather over the top and finding that your padding's too big and your leather doesn't cover it. So what I do, I prepare each piece of my leather work like this that you can see here. And that means that, look, I've got I can see the steps. So I've got my, my lever is at the, the bottom there looking up at me. Then I've got my first piece of receding felt and my last piece. And you should get little steps up. And it's the same with the circle, except it's much fiddlier. Now, once I've got it like that, I know that everything is going to fit. So how do we go about putting that onto our embroidery? You'll need a, a, a rather a, a nice fine needle. I like between needles because they're sort of fine enough that they pierce the leather, but they're small enough and stubby enough that I can hold onto them in my fingers and they don't bend. And I've got in there about um, a 10 inch length of gold cotton. And uh, you can use other things to apply it with, but you never use a metallic thread because a metallic thread is not strong enough to hold the leather to your work. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift off my first piece of felt, the smallest piece, and I'm going to centralise it in the middle of my embroidery. And then I'm going to put my thumb on it and I'm going to come up on the edge of the felt and take a downward stab stitch into the edge of it. And then I'm going to move round with tiny little stitches so that I'm actually stab stitching my felt into that central position. I hope you can see that. Now I'm going to work my way all the way around there. And there you go, that's the first one attached on there. Then I'm going to pick up my second piece of felt and I'm going to place that over the top and it should be sitting just within your drawn lines because it is slightly smaller. And again, pop your thumb on it and I do tend to start on the longer edges and in the middle. I never start on a point, it's a bit of a disaster. Whoops, and you can... That's the only problem you can catch up. There we go, pull that down. Okay, and again, we're going to work our way around, taking our time, nice, neat, methodical little stitches on the edge. Sometimes when you read instructions in the book, people say, and stab stitch the felt into the area. People do stitches all over the area of that little bit of felt. And all that does is flatten it down again. We don't want it to be flat. So we just want our stitches to go round the edge like this. So, so I've gone all the way around there and you can already see that that felt is beginning to dome up. So now to get your lever on. So pick up your last piece of lever, last piece of lever and pop it over the top and it should sit nicely just on top and you can see that it's just covering the lines and we can't see any of the felt. Now the one way to hold that in place while you're doing it is to throw some bars. Now I've still got my thread attached for where I've just put the felt on so all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my thumb so sorry because you won't be able to see my thumbs in the way and I'm going to just do a stitch over the top so i'm putting almost a holding stitch in and i'm going to put that over the top like that reposition make sure i'm in place and i'm going to put a few more holding stitches in down the length of the leaf and this just means that i haven't got to try and hold everything with my thumb while i'm trying to stitch the lever in place because this, the lever is the hardest part to go on and it moves so these little stitches that I'm putting in are going to hold it still while I stitch it into place. And then when I've finished, I will cut those stitches and remove them. And nobody will ever know that they are there or were there, I should say. Take your time. Oh, we can put one more in there. Now, at this point, if you've got any thread left, I would actually secure off on the back 
So turn over and just secure that in the back there because we need to put a fresh length on because we do not want to be stopping and starting as we go round our, our lever. So I have my needle threaded with a new thread and I'm going to start just in the middle on the long side of the leaf and I'm going to come up as close to the lever as I can. Never come through the lever from the bottom upwards because you'll push the lever away from you. So come up next to it and pull your thread through. And then I've turned my needle over so that I'm all, I've, I've got it and securely and I can then come onto the edge of my lever and I'm taking about a millimeter and I'm pushing down and I'm gonna take that stitch and pull the thread through. And then I'm gonna move about a millimeter along come up as close to the lever as I can, turn my needle over so that I've got it firmly in my hands and come in on the edge of the lever about a millimetre and push down. Now you may need a thimble for this. I don't use a thimble. Um, I have gardening hands and they're quite tough. So I don't find it a problem, but some people may need a thimble to help push down as they do this. So come up as close on the lever as you, to the lever as you can. And then you, you see me turn it over and I've got firm control of that needle as I push it down. Now, the difficulty with this is, is we want the stitches to be nice and even all the way around. So you've got to pay attention and eyeball it all the time. If you're too close to the edge of the lever when you take the stitch, it will rip through the lever and your stitch will come, will tear through and you won't have made a stitch. If you go too far in on the lever, then you're going to notice the stitches even more. So it's just trying to find the right look and eyeballing it all the time. When you approach those stitches that are holding stitches, try and go either side of them. And it takes quite a while to put the lever on, but it's so worth it, the effect. Um, and never start on a point. Never start on a point here. It's a disaster. Well, that's what I find anyway. Always start on an easy edge so you can get a real run into what you're trying to do. And by the time you get to a point, you have a little bit more understanding of how you're going to go about taking the stitch. And you'll begin to see that lever doming as you work your way along. Right, I've sewn all the way around there uh, with my stitches and you can see that as I've worked my way up the other side, can you see this lovely dome effect that's appeared here? So all I need to do now is to snip out these little holding stitches. So you just snip them out and release them. And you should end up with a nice padded shape and that's a lot easier than trying to keep your finger on it all the time <sighs> okay just needs a little bit more tidying up there but look at that that's a lovely domed piece of felt work and there's one down there that i've missed just there come on let me be having you quite difficult trying to do this in the air but you just clip those out and then you've got a nice neat um, applied piece of leather and really that's how you apply all sorts of leather whether they're small pieces there are other ways of doing it but this is my preferred way of putting leather on now as you get really really good and your stitches become even you don't necessarily have to um, put an edge in round that leaf but in this particular design it has it's got a couch line so when we couch up here I will just couch round the edge of that um, shape as well and that will tidy that up completely so if you um, for the first time you find your stitches are a little bit uneven don't panic because you've got a second chance to tidy that up and hide it with your couching stitches so I hope that's made it all a little bit easier for those of you that have never applied gold leather to an embroidery before um, and by all means try out any other method as well to see which one suits you best but this, as I said this is my preferred way of putting leather on and I hope this little video helps those of you that you know find um, trying to understand instructions from a book a little bit more difficult whereas a visual thing is sometimes a lot easier so I hope that helps you all and uh, I will go on and I will um, hopefully make a few more little videos maybe show you how to do the couching and 
and some of the other techniques. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and it makes a lot more sense now. And I look forward to seeing what you're going to do with your padded leather on your piece of embroidery. So until next time, look after yourselves, keep stitching, be happy. Bye. Thank you.